My name is Brian O'Reardon, General Manager of Lely Centre Mitchestown. Welcome to our virtual open day here on the farm of Tom and Maureen O'Neill in picturesque Ballybunion here in North Kerry. Today we'll find out how Tom and Maureen manage 140 cows and two Lely A5 astronauts and the unique challenges they face farming here on the edge of Ireland so close to the Atlantic Ocean. So Tom, do you want to give me a bit of a background as to how you started dairy farming, um, how long you've been in this part of the world? I, I, um, I'm originally from Waterford. I, um, my father came from here and he went to Waterford and started dairy farming in Waterford and I came back here uh, in 1997 I started here. There were sucklers here when I came here and I started dairying in 1997 and uh, I have uh, developed up to about 130 cows now at this stage and uh, there last year decided it was time to move on and, and get into to something new and I went for Lely Robots to uh, uh, basically move with the future and, and move ahead in, in my farm. How did you find the transition from conventional milking to automatic milking? The challenge, I suppose, is the first thing I started in that uh, the, the start-up day is a very difficult day for any farmer looking at his cows and trying to force them into something that they don't want to go into. And uh, I suppose that's the same for a milking parlour or otherwise, but in the robot it, it was absolutely amazing within a few days the way the cows were lining up to go into it. Now we did have a few older cows that that were a bit standoffish, uh, with, with ideas in their heads and still looking up at the milking parlour with notions of going up to it. But it's amazing how over time everything just uh, wears away and all their ideas go. And they love this and they love the system. And uh, uh, it, uh, when you talk about challenges, the, the next challenge that's in it is facing into the grazing system. and. Uh, to get the, the grazing operating properly can be difficult and uh, it's it's again it's like starting all over again with training cows into doing something that they haven't done before and training them to have their own mind on the whole thing and then there's also the training of the man himself because he also has to realize that it's a completely different system and that you must let the cows do their own thing. And how have you found the technical side so you've got a lot more technology associated with the automatic system than you would have done with conventional. Have you found it difficult to adapt to touch screens and computers rather than manual labour? Well, uh, thanks be to God, the touch screen has been no issue to me. Uh, again, being used to the iPhone, which I've had for 10 years or more. And uh, I, I find that the whole system, the, the actual information on the system will train you, if nothing else does, because you will be so interested in, in the information that's there. Th that is the, the real backbone of the the robot system is this information factor that you have and how it, uh, it really changes your whole perception of your herd. It's not just issue the highest yielder anymore, it's issue the highest solids. What way, you, you have so much information on her. It's, the cow is also in a different sphere in that the cow is much more, I've found anyway that my cows are much more uh, placid and much more interested in having a chat, for want of a better way of putting it, that the cow, you can stand beside the cow and put your arm around the cow and talk to her because she doesn't see you as, as a herdsman anymore and a threat. And that makes a big difference as well. And, and do you feel long term it will have a, a, it's an unfair question as you are only so new in, but do you feel herd health will improve in the long run because of I think uh, absolutely. Atmosphere. You can pick up on mastitis before it ever happens uh, through conductivity and through cell count uh, th that's available on every milking and the cow that's milking three times a day. You have three uh, views on her three times to see if there's something happening. So it, it definitely uh, has, has a massive uh, impact there. It's, it's way better than, than any farmer could ever be at observing the cow in that it will 
point out that a cow has a, has a health issue and you walk out into the yard and you find the cow and you look at the cow and you say, would I have seen that mm. if, she, if she was in the milking parlor? Would I have actually noticed that she's a little bit off? But this will have flagged it from just from her milk temperature and, and from maybe a conductivity rise, like, which is, is fantastic. And, and that's one of the things that I absolutely love about the system. We're in one of the most beautiful parts of the country and we have the sea behind us and the, we're right on the cliffs. Does that present any challenges to your grazing platform? The, the scenery is absolutely beautiful and there is a price for it and the price is uh, a problem with uh, exposure which uh, is a salt issue more than anything else and uh, the, the salt can create massive grazing issues. Uh, one of them would be where it just wipes out the grass and the other one is where it makes the grass quite distasteful. Because you have a very interesting system, it's an A, B, C and your C is, is very flexible, so can you explain a bit about why you decided to go down? Yes, well I need, I need an awful lot of flexibility here due to the variation in the amount of grass. My grass can change from one day to the next, I can have uh, a 25 day rotation today back to zero over 24 hours with a storm and when you have that situation you need absolute flexibility and I'm actually amazed this year how it even how it actually worked because we got a storm one particular storm in August the second storm uh, did quite a bit of damage and I just upped the silage and upped the number of hours the cows were inside and I had no heat whatsoever on milk or solids in that the system just kept working perfectly and I find that kind of that's what I've been trying to create with years is a system where I can nullify the salt issue. So for the for the majority of the time so far this year you've had grazing for 16 hours and you've been buffer feeding for eight hours yes. um, in the shed and the cows have the option of three different well two different options of grass or silage yes. across the 24 hour period. I was amazed when I changed actually over to the when when Grazing conditions got difficult and after the storm in August. I was absolutely amazed when I went to 50-50 indoors and outdoors how the cows attuned to that so well. I, I couldn't believe how that worked. I thought it was going to be a problem, but I knew that, that uh, I couldn't have too much travelling because conditions were so bad and grass was so scarce. And I thought when I put them in for 50% of the time that I would have problems with milkings and it's up the milkings went. I, I couldn't believe it. And uh, the cows come out, they stay outside for 10 to 12 hours. Some of them might stay 14, but they're back in and they milk straight away when they go in. They milk again six hours later and they milk before they come out, which I think is absolutely amazing, you know. I think some of that is coming from the cows themselves, that the cows have got more attuned to what's going on that in the early stages the cows weren't tuned in to what was going on, whereas now even the oldest cow in the place is going into the, the robot three to four times, like, you know, and, and uh, that just shows me that it's just an adjustment of men and cow, <laughs> and it takes time, and after six months at it, I can see that, that the, the light is at the end of the tunnel and we're there, you know, and that's how I feel about it, like that, that we've got there at this stage. We're here in the shed. What infrastructure changes did you have to make to facilitate an automatic milking system? I probably did a little bit more than I would have had to do. Uh, in reality, it just needed a space. I needed to create a space around the robots so as the cows could move freely around the robot and that they would have plenty of room to come back into the shed from that. Now, I finished up extending the shed and putting in a calf house with it which w w was, it's probably part of the system, in that I've got my calf house behind the robots, which works out very convenient to me. But uh, in, in the, the, the real story, uh, there is very little, only just a roof over the system and the tank around it that, that would have been necessary to do. And how many cubicles do you have 
to the right hand side of us? To the right hand side I have uh, 116 cubicles all together, that's this house and there's another house just up further but in between them is where the old milking parlour was and there's 50 cubicles going in there as soon as that's gone out that will be gone by the end of the year so there's another, uh, th there'll be 165 cubicles in there by the end of this year. As part of the design here, Tom has done a really nice uh, treatment area for any cows that he would have an issue with. So this can be used for drying off cows, it can be used for to possibly AI cows if you have a sick cow in the system. So what we have here is we have a Lely treatment box. So if a cow walks in, there's just a simple gate here at the back. You keep the cow inside with that. You've got, uh, if you want to tie up a leg for uh, hoof trimming, you pull this down, you tie your leg up to this. This is uh, for lifting legs. And a really nice feature here for drying off cows. Tom has a little pit here with a grid for safety. And you can give uh, treatments here if you want a teeth seal or you want to use a tube or whatever, you can do it with the pit here. So a lovely treatment area to go with his two daddy astronauts. So you don't have a, a strictly spring carving. Could you talk me through sort of what your carving pattern is? No, uh, I would have been calving a few cows in the autumn with a few years and uh, I am changing over completely to an all year round calving system. As I consider, I want to spread the work. I also think that an all year round calving system suits robots. And I think if you're in the system, you should utilize everything that works for it. And uh, I think that that system will eliminate this crazy spring thing that has been going on all my life. And if nothing, I want to try some other way. And uh, so far, so good. And as far as expansion goes, you mentioned you're putting in more cubicles. That would give you scope to milk more cows. Will you expand? You have a son, so you have a... Who's, who has an interest? I will expand, yeah. Uh, it is, um, the help is coming on. I hope <laughs> he'll stay with me. Um, I, I aim to, to maybe, well, to pass up 200 anyway, and maybe go to 250. I initially thought that uh, a robot would only milk 60 to 65 cows, but I have discovered that on an all year round calving system, you can get up to 80 cows without a problem on a robot. So I have a position for a third robot. So if I put in three, I should be able to, well, I have plenty of scope to go to 240, 250 uh, in the future. And like, I, I would have always been a person that considered that uh, what you do, you're doing yourself and like that you can't be waiting for your son to come along. But at the same time, it is a big plus to have him showing interest. And the robot seemed to have nurtured his interest. Do you find that your family life, work, balance has improved with the introduction of the rope? Because you don't just have one son, you have more children than Absolutely. that. It has been remarked by more, quite a few people. I've been seen at every match this year. <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to miss most of them <laughs> up until this year. Whereas now it doesn't matter what time a match is on, I can go to a match any time in the 24 hours. And the same as the cow can go in there any time in the 24 hours, I have the same freedom. And I think that's, it has created freedom for both me and the cow. And what would you say to someone thinking about going down this route? One of the, the common questions I've got from, from uh, onlookers, I might call them, is uh, to know uh, how many cows did, uh, did I have to dry because of starting with robots. I have yet to find a cow that the robot won't milk and that the robot won't uh, adhere to or that doesn't cop on within a week as to how all this works and does her thing. And what would I say to somebody that's, that's showing an interest in it? I would say, go on, give it a go and don't be talking about it until you have given it a go. And you also have to be careful of uh, doing too much looking in that you will create an indecision within your own head and you will create 
you know, that, that there are times when you bite the bullet and give it a go and see what happens. And uh, I know this is a big undertaking and it's a big jump for anyone, but I'm very happy with it and I am absolutely delighted that I made the, the move. <laughs>